न्यूज फ्रॉम अराउंड द ग्लोब हार्ट फ्रेश बैलेंस्ड एंड ऑब्जेक्टिव Hello and welcome to News Hour on Unity TV. The headlines: I will stand shorty for Namdi Kano's release. Solodu tells federal government, jam registration begins January 14. Surrender now, army tells terrorists. And on the foreign scene, Taliban rebukes UN over call to lift bans on Afghan women. And in sports, EPL Rashford joins Cristiano Ronaldo set unique record after Man United 2-1 win. over city and those were the headlines and for details and more of the stories i am rukayet sani ibrahim the anambra state governor chukuma solodu has called for the immediate and unconditional release of the leader of the indigenous people of biafra i pop mazin namdekanu who has been in detention since 2021 solodu made the demand in akwa the state capital during the campaign kickoff of the all progressives grand alliance on saturday He specifically appealed to the federal government to release Kanu unconditionally and immediately, speaking to the murmured crowd of supporters and party faithful. The governor added that if the detained IPOB leader cannot be released unconditionally, he should be released to him, saying he was ready to stand shorty for him. So Lord will promise to cater to Kanu and also offer to bring him to the authorities any time he was required. He noted that Kano could not be in prison custody while the issues of insecurity are being discussed in the entire southeast. Salodu described Abga as the first registered political party in Nigeria with the name Progressives adding Anambra is the home of Abga and the home of Progressives and we call on Nigerians to vote Abga all the way. The Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board German Saturday announced the sales of Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination (UTME) and Direct Entry forms. It advised prospective candidates seeking admission to university, polytechnic, and other tertiary institutions to begin the process of registration. It urged interested candidates to obtain their forms from Saturday, January 14, 2023, adding that closing date for registration is February 14, 2023. The board said the application is also applicable to foreign students at the accredited jam registration center. It advised candidates to open a new email or have a valid existing email account before starting the process. Candidates seeking admission into the university, polytechnic and college of education are required to have 5 credits at all level with English and mathematics as compulsory. The Nigerian army has ordered the remnants of the Boko Haram Isuap terrorists still in their hideout waging war against the country in the northeast to surrender and lay down their arms like the over 83,000 of their members and families that are surrendered to troops in Borno or face the fire power of the armed forces and blame themselves. The theater commander operation had in Kaimia General Christopher Musa gave the order on Saturday during the Nigerian army social activities 2023. held on Saturday at the Maimalari Cantonment Ground in Maiduguri, the Borno State's capital. Major General Musa said though the year 2023 was marred with challenges, the Northeast region recorded unprecedented peace through the gallantry efforts of the Nigerian military in disseminating the terrorists. He added that the massive number of terrorists who have surrendered is as a result of the kinetic and non-kinetic approach adopted by the Nigerian military in executing the war. Highlight of the occasion was display of cultural dances by the various cultural groups in the cantonment community and talk of war between female soldiers of 212 tank battalion and 33 artillery regime te- regime which was won by the 212 tank battalion female soldiers the president cut presidential candidate of the Labour Party LP Mr Peter Obi has replied the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress Aswaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu saying that the country will be safer in the hands of a stingy man speaking in Akure during a rally Obi admitted that he is stingy but prudent in the management of public funds Obi said that the nation will be safer in his care as a stingy man because he will be able to invest in education health economy and other sectors to develop the country he said the country will be more secured with the labor party at the helms of affairs saying the entire nigeria is insecure people are living in suffering and hunger 
The national chairman of the Labour Party, Julius Abore, lamented that the nation is at crossroads and all sectors not working. But they are ready to make Nigeria work again. The coordinator of Labour Party in South East, Chief Sola Ebiseni, pointedly said that the presidency should rotate to the South East. Ebiseni added that the Yorubas have had their turn and for fairness and equity, the South East should be voted for to take over from President Muhammad Buhari. Bauchi State Governor Bala Muhammad has urged members of the People's Democratic Party, PDP in the state, to vote for the presidential candidate of the party, Alhaji Atiku Abubakar. The call is coming amidst media reports that he was working against Atiku, an allegation that the state chapter of the PDP has denied. Muhammad, in company with his wife and other party and government officials, while speaking during his campaign flag off at Gamawa and Zaiki local government areas said Atiku was the best option and called his supporters to vote for Atiku massively during the general election. The governor declared that the PDP remains the only political party that can salvage the nation from its present situation. He urged Nigerians who are eligible to vote to massively vote for the presidential candidates of the PDP. The governor argued that as it stands, the only politician that can salvage the country from its economic doldrums in is Atiku, Muhammad, who is seeking re-election, promised the Mahmoud crowd that besieged the Gamawa and Zaki stadiums respectively to build a system industry and roads to ease the problem of transporting farm produce from farms to markets. He appealed the thousands of PDP supporters in Gamawa and Zaki to vote for Atiku Abubakar as president and himself as governor, as well as all other candidates seeking elective position in the state from top to bottom under the platform of PDP. The governor also urged people of Gamawa and Zaki local government areas not to be deceived by the APC's fake campaign promises. Kwara State Police Command on Saturday in Okolowo, a suburb of Ilorin, the state capital, arrested three suspected human traffickers and rescued 41 children from them. In a statement by the Police Public Relations Officer PPRO Okasami Ajayi, on behalf of the State Commissioner of Police, Paul Odama, said the suspected human traffickers were arrested at about 4 o'clock a.m. on Saturday along the Okolowo Expressway in Lorraine. The statement said that a detachment of policemen on special security assignment intercepted the trial of Musa Ayuba, 44, Jeremiah Muda, 35, and Luca Ayuba, 37, all of Bengil village via Kontogura, Niger State, with 41 young boys and girls, 22 boys and 19 girls, with their ages ranging between 5 and 15 years, while waiting for a lorry that was to convey them to their destination in Ilorin. However, the Kwara State Police Command said that the claim looked spurious and will be discreetly investigated, as it is highly suspected to be a case of child trafficking. The command also said that the children are presently in the custody of the State Police Command, adding that efforts were on to contact the state military Ministry of Women's Affairs. The Commissioner of Police, Paul Adama, advised parents and guidance to avoid releasing their children to unknown or deceitful child traffickers, as the children might be used as house help and other despicable endeavors, which is against the child rights laws. The police boss also said that the suspects arrested in the case will be charged to court after a thorough investigation. The presidential candidate of the new Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, Senator Rabiu Musa Konkoso has vowed to rid Nigeria of drug abuse if elected president at the forthcoming election. Speaking on Saturday in Kaduna, shortly after flags were presented to the governorship candidates from the Northwest State at the Northwest Presidential Campaign Rally, Konkoso promised to address issues of drug abuse among youths in the country. The presidential hopeful also promised to address the dilapidation of infrastructure in the country and reiterated his commitment to provide an enabling environment in the education sector through the payment of WIAC, NECO and JAM fees for prospective candidates. On his part, the vice presidential candidate of the party, Bishop Isaac Idahosa, said Nigeria at, the, at this critical time needs not just a president but a deliver and Kwankoso is the only one that can save the country from a myriad of challenges. Earlier, the NNPP National Chairman, Professor Ahmed Rafai Al-Ali, assured Nigerians that the party's presidential candidate, if voted on the 25th of February, 
will take Nigeria to the promised land. He noted that Nigeria is in deep socio-economic woes and that only the presidency of Senator Rabi Musa Konkoso can rescue the country and bring her out of the ugly situation. And under foreign scene, Afghanistan Taliban rulers on Saturday removed a renewed call by the United Nations to reverse rules blocking women's access to work and education, insisting they are regulating all matters in line with Islamic law of Sharia. Considering the responsibility it has towards the people and religion, the Islamic Emirates cannot allow acts against Sharia in the country. Chief Taliban spokesperson Zahibullah Muhajid said, his statement came in response to Friday's private meeting by the 15-nation UN Security Council where participating discourse and express gave concern regarding the restriction the Taliban have imposed on women since seizing power in Afghanistan in August 2021. Mujahid noted in his response that the Taliban administration understands the concern expressed by the Security Council. The Taliban have excluded women from almost all areas of public life, banning them from secondary and university education, visiting parks, gyms and bath facilities, and ordering most female government employees to stay at home. Last, last month, the hardline rulers forbade Afghan women from working for NGOs, saying they were not wearing the Islamic headscarf or respecting other Sharia directives. The move drew a strong backlash from the world and warnings that it could worsen an already bad humanitarian crisis in the crisis-hit country. Before Friday's closed-door meeting, nearly a dozen security council members, including the United States, Britain, France, Japan, Malta, Switzerland, and the United Arab Emirates, issued a joint statement underscoring the need to include women across all aspects of Afghan society. And in sports, Manchester United forward Marcus Rashford has joined the club's legend Cristiano Ronaldo's in an elite club after his goal in his side's Premier League's derby 2-1 win over Manchester City on Saturday afternoon. Two goals from Bruno Fernandes and Rashford gave Man United all three points against Man City. Jack Grealish did score for Pep Guardiola's side at Old Trafford. Rashford's goal against Man City means he is now the first Manchester United player to score in seven consecutive appearances in all competitions for the Red Devils since Ronaldo in April 2008. Rashford will now hope to continue his impressive display for Eric Ten Hag's side when they face Crystal Palace in their next game on Wednesday. With this story, we come to the end of our bulletin for today. You can follow us on our social media handles at Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Unity Radio FM TV, respectively. Thanks. My name is Ruk Ayatsani Ibrahim. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of our programs. Unity.